Okay, we're back here live in Silicon Valley, in the heart of uh, Silicon Valley in Santa Clara, California. This is the O'Reilly Media Strata Conference. This is SiliconAngle.com. Exclusive coverage, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the event, distract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. And we're here with Eric Colson, who's the Chief Analytics Officer at a company called Stitch Fix. <laughs> Wait till you hear what these guys do. Uh, Eric, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate having you on. We got a chance to see your keynote here. Your, your, your they did the speed dating you know, this morning. The speed right, keynoting. Right. Um, so let's get right into it. I mean, you guys build this recommendation engine, but like nothing I've ever seen before. So tell us your story. So uh, some people have described us as Pandora meets Zappos. So uh, algorithmically chosen clothing. So it's e-commerce, and we offer apparel items, but the, the customer doesn't pick them out. Rather, we will choose on behalf of the customers based on their preferences and ship the merchandise right to their home where they don't have to keep anything they don't want. If they decide they love it, they can pay for it and send us the money. But it's, they're under no obligation. So it comes down to having very relevant merchandise for the customer. So that's where the algorithms kick in, and we combine it with a little bit of human oversight because they add a lot of value uh, in the human intuition plays a big role in terms of curation and uh, looking at unstructured data and making sure this stuff is relevant for the customer. Uh, when we have penalties of being wrong that are severe, meaning we're paying shipping and we're making this customer unhappy if we're not sending them relevant to things, you want to have a lot of resources on it, so that's how we can justify some human oversight on you this. You get some stuff. big incentives, yeah. but yeah. so that's the interesting part, is you're not taking the human out of the equation, no. but you're, you're, I called it earlier IBM Watson for apparel, right. where essentially you know, you've got a, a machine saying, hey, this looks pretty good, what do you think the human interacts with that, uh, and then the machine learns from that. Is That's that right. the way it works? I mean, talk so, about the tech a little bit. Now, uh, I'll concede I had this ambition that I thought that maybe the algorithms is all we need and we wouldn't need any human. I've since retracted that and I found that they are very complementary. They're doing very different things. The algorithm is, is narrowing results down to finding very relevant stuff, but it still needs to be curated and that comes from human intuition. So the, the human stylist is picking things that, are, that go well together or, they're, or more, perhaps taking stuff away that's too similar. And that's stuff that's hard for an algorithm to do or to, um, customers can provide links to their Pinterest account which uh, displays pictures of them and things they like. And that says volumes about them but it's very unstructured data, very hard for an algorithm to do anything with. But the human has no problem extracting that information and applying their judgment to the curation of the products that we're going to send them. So you were at Netflix and you were saying this morning that you're you know, the perfect recommendation engine say, oh, I want to watch a movie tonight. It just starts playing a movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like it yeah. reads your mind. So okay, so you so you realize well we can't get to, to that vision, but this is a, a big idea. So now how does how does it work or how do you envision, how should people envision it working in terms of that human interaction, and then as I said before, the machine then learns from that human interaction? That's right. And, and we found that the the the, comp uh, the combination of algorithms and humans are actually not just complementary, but they're reinforcing, meaning they make each other stronger. So when humans don't take the exact recommendation. So we, we, we recommend, here's what we think is the highest probability this customer would love this stuff. And then the stylist says, well, maybe not that one they skip over. That's information to us. Why did they skip over? And we can figure out, well, is, do they know something we don't? And we, if so, we can unfold that back into the algorithm. In other cases, humans have beliefs that they think are right, and it turns out they're not always right. So sometimes we expose biases and prejudices on the part of the humans, and again, we're learning that way. So we get to learn either way, no matter who, which side is right, and that's how they're reinforcing. So they get better and better over time. And like you say, you've got a huge incentive to, to get it Absolutely. right and, and improve yeah. it over time. Talk about the tech involved. Obviously, Netflix was, was pioneering recommendation engines before they were popular. Now you're in a, in a different space, it's lifestyle. What data sources are you using um, to kind of mine that kind of targeting? Right. I mean, you're talking about micro-targeting and delivering a consumer product to a customer, a very difficult pro technical problem. Can you talk about that? Sure, so in terms of technology, so we don't have the scale challenges that a Netflix has, um, the data is not unwieldy. So it get, means we get to put more of our attention towards the analytics, the math, the modeling that we do to build good predictive engines. Um, less so around infrastructure and making sure this stuff runs in a reasonable amount of time. It's not a lot of volume. There's, the volume is not daunting, right? So we, we have some issues where we want to make sure it runs fast enough. But as we introduce more complexity, we have tricks we can do. We can run that offline and batch and shuttle over the results. So we're not as worried about scale. We want to just keep getting better and better at relevancy, and that's where all of our mind share can go since we don't need to worry about keeping the Hadoop cluster running and stuff. This stuff is 
very But it's manageable. a new cluster, yeah. No, it's not. It's a okay. Postgres database. Good. We do most of our discovery in R, and we cobble the two together, which is something that we'd like to solve. Right now, uh, it's about elegance rather than scale. We'd rather right. have nice, elegant yeah. code. Fidelity on the targets and, and with the customer satisfaction. True. Well, we want to, um, it's more, so when I say elegance, I mean coding elegance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so we not have clothing elegance. Of course, that needs to be yeah. elegant. Um, but when we write our code, it's a very different paradigm from database SQL, and unfortunately, we need to marry the two. So we're trying to we're experimenting with different ways on getting those two together. But now they're decoupled. They right? are decoupled. What we do now is we do our discovery in R, and then we'll rewrite some of the code to make it work in a production system. And we'd like to get rid of that rewriting step. We'd like <laughs> to have it all seamless and nice, yeah. and that's what I mean when I say elegant. It's just yeah, yeah. the way we think when we're doing math, it just works. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah elegant programming is always the way to go. Um, my final question for you, obviously, I know you got to go uh, yeah. quickly, is, um, what were some of the things you've learned when you rolled out? Because obviously this is kind of one of the, I would put this, this, your company and your efforts in the new bucket. It's an old way and new way. The new way is disrupting and providing new user experiences. You're in that bucket, you know, congratulations. But what have you learned along the way? What can you share with the folks out there in terms of you know, taking the chance? Obviously you know, to do it is great, but now you, you, know, you got to go out there, do some building, write some code, try to get some elegance going on there that you mentioned. What, do you, what have you learned uh, you can share? Well, I, uh, the thing I mentioned earlier was this combination of human judgment plus algorithms is really powerful. It's something we did implicitly at Netflix. You, you make recommendations and you, you evaluate them after the fact to see if you're right or wrong, and you can sometimes, as a human, explain it. Oh, no wonder they didn't like this. It had X, Y, and Z. So that X, Y, and Z is something. Obvious. Sometimes it's obvious, yeah, right? sometimes it's obvious. We used to joke about the sexy box shots would always increase the click rate at, at Netflix. And that's something that isn't manifest in the data. There's no attribute that says, yes, this has a sexy box shot. So it's things <laughs> like that that we've gotten really good at Stitch Fix of getting that captured, get that data, get that encoded in the data, and that explains most of the variation. Yeah. In fact, we can be a bit relaxed on our algorithms because the data is doing most of the work for well, us. Well, you know, obviously we're in the content business and we have a big data back end, and we've, uh, we've always been a big believer that machines can't always get those nuances. The human and, and curation and aggregation fails on some level. It does yeah. a good job, but to be really well done, you've got to have a human element in the, Absolutely. In, in the equation. Yep. Um, well, congratulations, Eric Colson uh, with uh, fi Fix. Stitch Fix. Stitch, Stitch Fix. There Stitch you go. Fix. <laughs> uh, Chief Architect, Analytics Officer. Uh, I know you got some big news coming up, and uh, we hope to hear more from you later. Thanks for coming inside Silicon Angles The Cube. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest. Here, day two, wall to wall coverage, three days, Strata, uh, O'Reilly Media, and The Cube. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>